you probably had your heart set on winning a fantasy championship. And now you're at risk of losing it all because you don't know who to add, which way to go, or who to turn to. In this episode, I'm going to walk you through the top waiver wire targets you need to focus on and help you take a step towards that fantasy basketball championship. We believe every NBA fan that plays fantasy football should also play fantasy basketball. So another episode on the go. I'm getting kind of comfortable with doing this. So I'm really curious to get some feedback from you. So that way, if it's something that you want me to continue to do throughout the playoffs, I'll keep doing it. People seem to like it so far, but the more, you know, just kind of validation that it's working and it's helping you, the better. So please let me know. I'm waiting for my doctor's appointment in the parking lot. It's wild, Joe. Like I'm out here thinking about how can I help you win your fantasy championship. And honestly, I started the playoffs in one of my leagues and it looks like I'm not going to make it out of the first round. <laughs> and it's it's heartbreaking. It's a team that I build uh I built around Joel Embiid, right? And Giannis. Giannis missed a couple games this week, so it's killing me. And other than that, I have players like Fred Van Vliet, like it's it's not a really um, deep team, and I'm getting exposed right now because of that, because my, my stars are injured. So wanted to share that with you to let you know that if you're struggling, it happens to us. We have years where we have players who are injured, and you have no, con- you have no control over that, and you don't need to beat yourself up about it. All you can do is continue to pivot, make moves on the waiver wire, and that's what we're going to talk about today. But before we do that, I want to talk about some updates. Ben Simmons out for the season. So if you are on the fence about whether or not to drop him, you could drop him like a bad habit. It's over. Um, he's had back in, uh, back pains or back injuries over the last couple years, actually. And it's impacted him as not just a fantasy basketball player, but an NBA player in general. I don't remember the last time he's played a full season. Ben Simmons is no longer the Ben Simmons that we used to love in fantasy. Like, it might be a wrap. Your man might be washed. We'll pray for him. Hopefully, it's not the case, but it looks really, really bad. The next update is Steph Curry. Just last night, Steph Curry sprained his ankle, y'all. This is a red alert for you to pay attention to what's happening with Steph Curry. You have to pay attention to this because... If Steph is going to be out for a significant amount of time, and at this point in the season, fantasy playoff time, a significant amount of time is a week or two. If he's out for all next week, maybe two weeks or even three weeks, for us in fantasy, this could be a huge issue if we have Curry on our roster. So you want to start thinking about how are you going to you know, adapt to this challenge? And also, if in fact... You don't have Curry, how can you capitalize on it? Players that you might want to start thinking about stashing, if in fact this is a serious injury, is uh, Brandon Pajemski. He'll see an uptick. And he had some pretty good runs throughout the season, but he's kind of stabilized to where he's going to be. That will change if Curry is out. Clay Thompson, if you're in a shallow league and people are not in on Clay, and Clay might even be on a waiver wire in a four man, six team league, something like that. He's someone you need to keep an eye on. And if you have him on your roster, I would hold tight. Don't don't make any moves until we find out what happens with Curry. And the same thing for CP3. Chris Paul, if, in fact, Steph Curry is out for a significant time, and again, in the fantasy playoffs, significant time can mean, you know, 10 days, 7 days. CP3 will likely be the main beneficiary of a Steph Curry absence. So you need to pay attention to that. Um, Okay, so let's get into waiver wire targets. We got to start with the elephant in the room or the cat in the room, Carl Anthony Towns. So Carl Anthony Towns is out, which creates opportunity in Minnesota. First, I'll say that there was like a back and forth about how serious his injury was between Shams and... um, 
and Woj. But in the end, it is a significant injury and he will undergo surgery and he's going to be out for our fantasy playoffs and our fantasy season. He'll be out throughout the NBA regular season as well. I think he has a chance to maybe come back um, for maybe the Western Conference Finals or something like that if they make it that far. So it's a wrap for Cat. And it's sad because he was having a decent season. And for me, I have him in a couple of spots, so it's it's a little tough. But this is a part of the game, guys. When you have an injury, it can be an opportunity. So the first wave of wire target we want to talk about is Kyle Anderson, who is the power forward from the Minnesota Timberwolves, who will likely move into the starting lineup consistently. That's what happens when Cat is out. I believe he started last night, and he'll continue to start uh, for the foreseeable future as long as Carl Anthony Towns is out, unless there's some kind of dramatic shift and they want to test something out. So the thing about Kyle Anderson is when he gets playing time, he puts on for the city. He puts on like Young Jeezy and Kanye remix. Like he really is a valuable fantasy basketball piece specifically for nine category leagues. For points leagues, there is still some value there, but his value is amplified in a nine cat in a category scenario, nine cat or eight cat or beyond that, right? Um, so last year he started 46 games, and in those 46 games, he averaged 10.5 points. 5.6 rebounds and 5.6 uh, 5, 5.5 assists. So, you know, that's something that is fantasy gold in a category league, but even in a points league, those are pretty pretty good numbers. So, if Kyle Anderson is on your waiver wire, I would run it, grab him. It's worth noting that Minnesota, I believe they have just two games next week. So, you want to be mindful of that for for playoff purposes. If you are starting your playoffs way later, like some folks are, that's okay. You can just ride through those two weeks, especially if you've already locked in your your playoff spot. The next player we want to talk about is also impacted uh, a player that is getting some opportunity based on the impact of Carl Anthony Towns' injury, Nas Reed. Nas Reed is a pretty good contributor even without the injury. Um, he'll get a bump in minutes. And honestly, Cat's injury is going to impact the, the whole team. It's also going to impact um, Gobert, and it's going to impact Ant-Man. But for Nas Reed, he's somebody that's available in a lot of spots. So just like Kyle Anderson, he's a player that I would give kind of a test run to see how he does I would pick him up and I would hold if in fact you're in the playoffs next week and the, and the Wolves only have two games then you got to just make your decision from there so I wouldn't try to go and hold him longer than you need to hold him but I would say that um, he's definitely somebody that can contribute to your fantasy championship run Another player we want to talk about is Josh Hart. Uh, there's The Knicks are banged up, y'all. Like, banged up. So many people hurt. Jalen Brunson, I think he'll be coming back soon. But um, Julius Randle, just a lot of injuries there. So Josh Hart is a player that is available in a, lot of, uh, in a lot of leagues. If he's available in your league, I would strongly recommend grabbing him and seeing if he could bring you some value. The next player we want to talk about is quite interesting. This gentleman is a player that is not as popular as some of the other ones, and he's kind of going below the radar. I'm talking about from the Portland Trailblazers, Jabari Walker. Jabari Walker, over the last, um, not even over the last, for the four games that he's played in March, check this out, 25 minutes per game. That is wild, yo. He's getting some opportunity. And in those four games, he's averaged 12.5 points per game, nine rebounds, and one steal. So get yourself some Jabari Walker because he could bring you some value for your uh, fantasy playoff run. And just another guy we want to talk about, uh, we mentioned Ben Simmons having an injury. 
they're going to give Dennis Schroeder the keys to the car in Brooklyn. They're going to be like, you're our point guard. Let's see what you can do. And if Schroeder gets minutes, he can be a valuable piece for fantasy. Now, and I say this all the time, but I have to reiterate it. If any of these folks don't work in terms of schedule when you're in the playoffs, it is okay to drop. This is not the point of the season where we're trying to hold on to players to see if they'll produce later on. This is where we're playing in the moment. We're playing for the minute. We're playing for the hour. So you have to be merciless when it comes to dropping and adding these players. So this list is not a list of, hey, hold these guys while you lose your your fantasy playoff matchup. This is like grab them. When it works for you, when their schedule works for your roster, and drop them when it doesn't, and that's kind of how we have to approach this. Another note I wanted to share with you, super important: we need you to be a two-way player in fantasy basketball. How do you do that? First, on offense, we need you to subscribe to the YouTube channel. We have about thirty. I think we need thirty more people to subscribe, and we're gonna hit ten. K, 10,000 subscribers on YouTube, which is a huge milestone for our channel, but we can't do it without your support. So if you watch the content and you haven't subscribed, about 70% of the people who, who watch our content don't subscribe to our channel, which is okay. I get it. We're asking you openly, please do us a favor. We do this for free in service to you. All that we ask is that you push, push that button and subscribe to the channel on offense. On defense, we need you to listen to the audio version of this podcast. And you can listen to it on wherever you listen to your podcast, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, right on down the line. And if you don't listen to podcasts, that's okay. You should start. Like, it's a great way for you to get this information in the morning, when you're on your way to work, when you're on your way to school, when you're doing your workout, when you're washing the dishes, when you're cooking dinner, when you're, you know, going for your run. Any of that time where you can kind of multitask and do another thing, maybe you have a job that you listen to music and listen to the radio, you can put us in, check us out. We want you to do both. We want you to play defense and we want you to play offense. So please subscribe to the YouTube channel, but also take the top off. Boobies is out, hair blowing in the wind. Listen to the podcast as well. Even if it's the same episode, it's okay because you might miss something. It's just like a movie. You might miss something the first time you watch or listen to it. Another thing, I want to make sure I'm available for you if you have questions, right? If you have questions about your team, the best place during the playoffs to drop your questions is on the YouTube version of this episode. I will respond to every single comment, but it's one thing I want you to take note of. If you have a second question after you leave your comment, do not ask the question in the same thread. It just gets really wonky, especially if a video has a bunch of comments and it's just hard to keep up with. It's really clean and easy if you have a follow-up question to just even start it in a new thread. So, you know, if you need to give me context in that second question, that's okay. For example, if you say, hey, should I drop you know, Malcolm Brogdon for Jarris Walker, and I say, definitely grab Jarris Walker, you can start another thread that's like, okay, what, uh, I, I just dropped the question about Brogdon and Walker, what about Schroeder? And then it'll connect. But I'm gonna be on it fast, y'all, because I wanna make sure you guys get the value. One more thing. If you wanna s- set up a call with me, if you wanna jump on a video call with me so I can actually walk you through your lineups, we can make a streaming plan, all of that good stuff. All you have to do is go to the Did It app, that's D-I-D-I-T, and we can set up a call. The first fo- the first call is absolutely free. It costs you nothing, up to 12 minutes, which is about a $25 credit. You have to have an iOS device, but you can do a screen share of your roster, everything, and I'll walk you to your fantasy championship. <sighs> I think that's it. Don't forget, though, play the waivers, Set your lineups and believe in fantasy.